Previously on Miss President. So we are going to be focusing on institutions of governance because I am informed that you've uh, gone through your governance class. Remember that governance is basically um, a mechanism or a system of exercising leadership. The most important thing that we used as our basis to form our party was um, that we need to anchor our party on constitutionalism. So all our manifestos, all our when we name our party, we are supposed to make sure we don't contradict with any other existing parties. So basically, constitutionalism was the greatest takeaway. Any position of power, my first uh, objective would be to create opportunity. Hello, my friends. Hello, Kaibuni. Welcome. 50. I'm seeing you, yeah? <laughs> All under one roof. Fighting for one position. Miss President. Let me tell you, I have never seen such passion, verve, vigor, watch it too. These women are amazing, creative, intense. There are many words to describe them, but the one word that comes to mind that sums it all up is uh, inimitable. Yeah, that one. Uh, if you don't know it, Google is your friend. Let me ask you again. Is Kenya ready for a female president? Hmm? <laughs> Are these contestants ready to lead? We have asked them this question more than once. And the answer is an unmistakable and emphatic resounding yes. In the coming episodes, the contestants will undergo training, tasks, various challenges, and problem solving activities, presentations, and finally eliminations to eventually end up with one winner Miss President. This is Miss President, where you never really know until you know. Over 700 applications were received from all over Kenya, and from these, 350 contestants were shortlisted. After a series of auditions, over 50 women were selected, and they will now battle it out of the academy for the coveted title of Miss President. Kevin Osido is an accomplished governance specialist who serves as the executive director of County Governance Watch, CGW, an NGO whose purpose is to provide solutions for socioeconomic and political development in the counties of Kenya by educating and building the capacity of citizens and county government officers. He is keen on driving service delivery through public participation spaces in the counties. Last week, we learned about uh, forming political parties and all that entails. Now, what happens when your political party actually wins the election? You have to get to the next stage. We have our governance expert, you know, the executive director of um, the uh, County Governance Watch. Uh, and this, of course, is uh, Mr. Kevin Osido, who is here with us. And um, sir, take it away. It is very great to see you again. You formed your political parties, some of you are disqualified, some of you 
were sent home to go and look at your degrees and revise them again. <laughs> Some of you did not have qualified running mates, yeah? Some of you didn't have enough signatures. So I just want to take us through the basics of what forming a government means and formation of a government. After the general elections is over, then the next stage is the formation of the government. And in this case, because we are running as presidents or as president, the president is the head of what is called national government. The constitution of Kenya in Article 141 speaks about the swearing in of the president. So the first thing that you need to focus on is the swearing in of the president. The swearing in of the president is done in public before the chief justice or, the, or in his or her absence, in our case is her absence, the deputy chief justice. Why is this important? Why must it be done in public and during broad daylight? Because uh, swearing in a president at night in this country led us to war in 207 December. That's why I was getting to a gross sleep post election violence. Thank you. You do not want to have public servants working extra hours. You do not want to have public servants engaging in activities that do not involve the citizens because it is the citizens who actually undertook the election. So the public nature of swearing in the present gives some semblance of ownership of the people who participated in that particular election. Number three, of course, that the president elect assumes office by taking and subscribing the oath or affirmation of allegiance and the oath of affirmation of allegiance for the execution of the functions of office as prescribed in the third schedule. The power of the national government it is distributed within the three arms. Number one, of course, we have seen the executive headed by the president, the judiciary headed by the chief justice, and the legislature headed by speaker, right? And the Constitution of Kenya, part three, in Article 152, puts in place what is called the cabinet. So the president is the leader of this cabinet, which is part of the government. And that forms the executive arm of government. The cabinet consists of the president, so you are a member of the cabinet, the deputy president, you are running mate, the one you are elected with, the attorney general, who is the legal advisor to the president and the executive, so the government, and then you have not fewer than 14 and not more than 22 cabinet secretaries. One other person who is also a cabinet, a member of the cabinet that you are required to appoint is the secretary to the cabinet. And a lot of times this lady or gentleman is also the head of public service. So a lot of com communication, conversations, right hand dealings of the president that inform government business are done by the secretary to the cabinet. With those ladies and ladies, I thank you so much. God bless you and all the best as you lead Kenyans through Miss President. With all that knowledge, you still want to be Miss President? Yes! <laughs> <laughs> what we're going to do is we're going to prepare ourselves for the next assignment, okay? Which uh, Malimu is going to come and give us. Last week we talked about forming of political parties and now that the parties have captured political power, this week we talked about what? Forming? Government. The next assignment shall be assigned to these lovely ladies. And as we say here at Miss President, you never really know until you know. We have seen you as president elect. You now are expected to form your government by indeed putting in place a cabinet. So the assignment is to focus on nominating and the ultimate appointment of your cabinet secretaries. Remember, focus is on the legal framework, which is premised on 14 to 22 
as the number, minimum and maximum. Also remember to focus on the two-third gender concerns. Last week we went through our manifestos. Can you be able to link the things that are in your manifestos to your cabinet as you run your government? When we did last week's course on formation, formation of political parties, we said you need to think outside and to be creative and innovative. So please be as creative and innovative in this week's assignment. All the best and looking forward to seeing your cabinets. Thank you very much. Over 700 applications were received from all over Kenya, and from these, 350 contestants were shortlisted. After a series of auditions, over 50 women were selected, and they will now battle it out of the academy for the coveted title of Miss President. Our judges for this season are Dr. Zippy Okoth, who is a lecturer at KCA University, a gender specialist, an award-winning filmmaker, and founding director of Lake International Pan-African Film Festival. She will be looking for one who is informed, bold, visionary, and has a unique leadership predisposition. Jerry Kirani is a policy advisor and researcher and advocate for women's advancement. She will be looking for courage, determination, and excellence. She will be kind but firm as she feels that at the Academy, there is no room for mediocrity. Michael Onyango, is the founder and leads as the agenda setter for Kenya's largest and most trusted social media platform WhatsApp, the Forgotten Bottom Millions, 4BM, a social enterprise currently reaching over 500,000 persons every week for free via WhatsApp and transforming the lives of thousands of Kenyans. Michael will be looking for audacious, bold and daring leaders. Last week, the trainer told you guys to form a political party which you did, there's a one, two, three, four, five, six of you. And then now this week, they said that because you've actually captured uh, power, political power through your parties, now it's time to form a government, and that government must have a cabinet, and that cabinet must be formed according to the portfolios in your various manifestos. And that's exactly what you did today, isn't it? So you want to listen to your presentations and to basically put into action the experiences in terms of how you've been able to come up with your cabinet and we are going to begin with group with group six Thank you for your patience. Now, I would like to introduce Her Excellency Ashura Michael to tell us more about what we are prepared for you for the future of our country. Welcome. I'm excited to be before you here today as the President of Kenya. As you're aware, the Constitution of Kenya demand under Article 152, Section 2, demands for appointive and nominative position for us to work. As I promised, my government will focus on uh, promoting diversity, inclusion, uh, socioeconomic, health, 
and uh, all that we stated in our manifesto. We had a, a com my committee had a meeting recently and proposed some names that have uh, forwarded to parliament for approval and who are going to support to develop and move this country to the next level. Fellow Kenyans, as you're aware, our government promised inclusion. This will be implemented as per the constitution of our country. Article 54 of section 2 demands that we have to appoint persons with disabilities. Article 55 talks about youth, opportunity for young people. When you go back to Article 56, talk about gender, marginalized group, this is not enough. Article uh, 27 of the Constitution, Section 8, we have to fulfill the two-third gender, gender rule. My dear Kenyans, as your president and with the new government in place, we have managed to nominate persons who are ready to help us achieve our agenda and fulfill our manifesto. fellow Kenyans, thank you for being here. All protocols of pub, we have the fourth estate. Welcome to State House. Uh, today we are pleased that pass one to our uh, standing orders and also the Constitution of Kenya. I'm pleased to take the powers conferred to me by Article 152, 2 of the Constitution of Kenya that put to put in place my cabinet. I have put in co into consideration regional balance, also I have put into consideration special interest groups, professionalism, and even working experience of the, of, uh, the four mentioned uh, nominees. Fellow Kenyans, we are having, uh, we had promised, and we are up to the task to deliver. As we had promised during our campaigns, we had four pillars which were our main focus. One of them was healthcare, we had food security, we had environmental conservation, and we had education as our priorities. For us to achieve this, we have to work around the clock with competent, experienced, and selfless leaders who have proven beyond doubt that indeed, with a collaborative approach, we can move at the end of the day and bridge the gap that as a party that is forming the government, we had said issues to deal with inequalities, political, social, economical inequalities are things that have made us not be able to reach um, national development and growth as it is. We are going to deliver on the promises we made and make sure that we bridge the gaps that are constantly making us marginalized. And uh, during our, 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 our uh, nomination, for, uh, or my nomination for this particular list um, of my cabinet, I ensure that we looked at people with disability, we considered uh, the marginalized, and we also looked at the issue of um, gender. And, and as you can see, 14. Uh, uh, 14 are women in my cabinet and nine are men. So that is showing our our our, um, our commitment towards uh, meeting the two thirds gender rule and adequate representation. And our government represents the face of Kenya. Thank you very much. God bless you. God bless Kenya. Wa Kenya hamjambo. Kwanza ningependa kushukuru kwa uchaguzi uliokamilika ilikuwa wa amani na haki na leo tuko hapa kuanzisha uh, serikali yetu Having won the 2022 general election of August 2022 elected by majority of Kenyans and having been sworn in as the president of the Republic of Kenya and commander in chief of the defense forces I am glad to assume my responsibility of putting in place a functional government In line with constitution of Kenya 2010 Chapter 7, Article 132, Part 2A, that mandates me to appoint my cabinet and recognize the importance of the cabinet. I'm here to, 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 to give you the cabinet nominees. 
This was formed in line with the fourth schedule of the 2020-2010 Constitution of Kenya uh, on national government functions. Our promise as, as a government is to achieve a sustainable country with reduced inequalities because my shabora ni jukumule. My government is committed to social economic development based on our three pillars of economy, social, and governance. My appointment has been guided by Article 54, 55, and 56 of the 2010 Constitution of Kenya on inclusivity for people with disabilities, youth, gender, and minorities. As part of the two-thirds gender rule, the gender rule, Article 27, part two, part two, we have eight men as part of our cabinet nominees, nine women, and one person with disability, and three youth. The nominees have met the requirements of chapter six of the article chapter 6 and Article 10 of the National Bank. And with this, we expect that we'll have a better government with prosperous and see how we can add not only uh, to the existing, but also foresee our future. Remember, we talked about wadibikaji, accountability, and you can never stress that enough. As government, we are and we have to, to make sure that we have reduced the corruption cases within our country. And I believe and with God's will, I am sure we are going to be able to deliver what we had promised throughout our campaign till death. Thank you very much. Members of the Fourth Estate, fellow Kenyans, today I and my Deputy President, Lennox Kipsang, would like to thank all of you for the trust that you have placed in us. We came to you with a manifesto anchored on four pillars, zero hunger, good health, education, and gender equity. And you chose to believe in us. You turned up in large numbers. And because of you, today, we no longer stand before you as a candidate and running mate. We stand before you as president and deputy president of the Republic of Kenya. By virtue of the authority vested in me in the, by the Constitution of Kenya, I come before you with a list of nominees, and this list has been placed before Parliament, pending approval. And the individuals that are in this list, I believe, are individuals who are capable of helping us deliver on the promises that we made to you. I believe that they will act with integrity, that they will be accountable to the people of Kenya. And we also believe that whatever it is they're going to do in their various capacities is going to restore human dignity to the people of Kenya. We have 17 nominees representing 17 ministries. Of the 17, we have nine female and eight male. Of the nine female, we have one representative for the youth and one representative for persons with disabilities. Of the eight men, we also have a representative for the youth and a representative for persons with disability. We hope and believe the Parliament is going to approve them so that we can get on to fulfilling the promises that we made to you. Welcome back to Mrs. President. And we have now come to that moment. What we in Kenya like to say is a den 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 moment. And basically, this is that moment whereby we have all that tension and anxiety because we really, really don't know what's going to happen next. Because here, Mr. President, you really don't know until you know. There must be someone to go home. And uh, that person who will be going home today might not be a weak person, but might be a person who has made a simple mistake that uh, as human beings we always do. So the region might be revealed by the judges, but uh, it's a person who will make the simplest, simplest mistake that all of us will not notice it's a mistake. Uh, in no particular order, uh, there's a group that has been in trouble from day one. I have a feeling they may go home. I hope that no one is going home today because I believe people have actually been trying to do their best. And um, uh, the judges have actually highlighted areas of improvement. I believe the judges will have actually a very difficult time or the group will also have a very difficult time in actually determining who goes home. It's not going to be an easy task. You can't just so easily say that so-and-so is going home because 
you look at uh, if it's presentations, if it's what people are, uh, the way they articulate their manifestos, their party beliefs, then you see these are people you really need. As a, uh, as a, as a competitor, you really need to step up your campaigns and uh, rally more people behind you to believe in you, but the competition can't be underestimated. Uh, who I think are my biggest competitors are people who are actually currently engaged in politics because it's like they have first-hand experience of what it means to run for office. What I've realized, the judges are very particular. So at times you really think you've done your best and then they point out some things that you really hadn't thought about. So everyone is just on the edge of their seat. You never know. You might think you're safe and you're not. And we're back to Miss President, and this is the part I really like because I get to sit down and uh, have a little conversation with the judges and also the trainer, uh, get a little insight into uh, what they're thinking, their views, their opinions. Um, I don't know if they're going to let me in into if someone's going to go home or not. I don't know because here, you know, you never really know until you know. But um, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do a bit, a bit of a recap because last week uh, the, the, the ladies were forming political parties. Uh, this week, they're forming government, complete with the uh, cabinet. Uh, this is based on the party manifestos and the various um, portfolios in the manifestos. And um, that was quite a very interesting exercise. I mean, uh, considering the fact that it's only, according to the constitution, it's only the, the president who can actually form a cabinet. What was your view like? Precisely. Mm -hmm. And if you look at uh, cabinet, is basically the mechanism through which a government is uh, coordinated, run and managed. Because mm -hmm. government, then we have the three arms that include the executive, the judiciary, and the legislature. And so cabinet is domiciled within the executive that is supposed to implement the manifesto mm -hmm. and the pledges of that particular government. And that is done through, of course, once you the president is selected, so you are president-elect, you are sworn in into office, and the moment you are sworn in, you begin to work. Mm -hmm. And so the easiest way for the president to engage in implementing the manifesto and the aspirations of that particular government is by putting in place a cabinet. And mm -hmm. so it's been quite exciting to see how the ladies have been able to, you know, uh, understand the mechanisms of, uh, uh, of putting in place a cabinet, the regional balancing aspects, even the numbers, the delegate, the, the delicate mechanisms, mm -hmm. as you can see on the table, mm -hmm. of, of the numbers themselves. And it's been quite interesting uh, to me, particularly when it comes to decision making and how those particular decisions are made. So knowing that the, 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 the threshold for a cabinet in Kenya is a minimum of 14 to maximum of 22, did they, did they meet, were they able to actually hold up, to meet the task? I will direct that to Judge Zipi. Um, I, I won't say they failed. Uh, I was just not very really happy with those who are going to the, for the maximum. Uh -huh. Like uh, when somebody <laughs> says uh, you need to, to, to get uh, as a cabinet, why must you get the total 22? Actually, there's a group that got 23. So we're like, okay, we are already stretched. Mm -hmm. As an economy, uh, somebody who's going to be a leader must, must understand where we are right now as, an, as a country, in terms of our bills, our economy, our debt status, and what we are able to cut off as a country. So when you stretch us by giving us 23 members in the cabinet, we ask ourselves, why do we need that? And then after doing that again, you give us um, cabinet ministries that are not really uh, conversant with the current era. We are in a very digital era, we are mm. in the creative revolution and uh, digital industrialization, as in, why can't you give us cabinets that are in touch with where we are going uh, as not just even as a country but as a globe? But 23 with overlapping ministries? Mm -hmm. hmm. <laughs> Judge Michael? Yeah, um, I'm, I'm, I'm rather disappointed because this group is much younger and I'm seeing a lot of cut and paste. Mm -hmm. I'm not seeing them being audacious, bold and daring in terms of how they're thinking in terms of how they would actually want to run the country differently. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I think there's going to be a lot of shake up within our engagements with them, because that must come through. We cannot be, it cannot be business as usual, mm -hmm. because things have changed and they must be able to grasp that and they must be able 
to start outputting that in all the work going forward in the weeks to come. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Jerry? Well, <clears throat> I've noticed something that we saw in season one. And uh, I don't know whether it has anything to do with the fact that sometimes women um, fear taking bold steps like Church Michael is saying. Mm -hmm. Because, again, they're just um, huddling together, the herd mentality. Mm -hmm. They're not letting their personal characters come out. Because there are some groups where you see they're jostling to see which person should be the leader. And quite clearly, there's somebody within the group who feels they are a strong leader, but will not come out and say, look, I think I can lead the team. So it's a thing that we saw also in season one. And like Judge Michael is saying, we really have to be um, tough with them in also our interactions so that they start realizing that they need to separate themselves and bring themselves out as they are as individuals. Last week I told them, mm -hmm. you are not friends, you are colleagues mm -hmm. and it is a competition. <coughs> so this thing of covering each other, I mean, we've, we've got to strip them of that. Mm. Yes. Did you observe anything uh, in terms of, was it uh, a winner-take-all situation or the possibly uh, you know, reaching, reaching across to other parties to uh, get their cabinet members? Well, um, I, I'm not sure about whether you know, they were reaching out to other parties to get their cabinet members, mm -hmm. but they're still not seeing this thing as a competition. Mm -hmm. So there's still a bit of work to be done on that. Mm -hmm. Yes. So they've survived week one, they've survived week two. I wonder what week three holds for them. Business unusual. <laughs> <laughs> Well, <laughs> and that's, that's basically <laughs> what we do here at uh, Miss President because you never really know until, until you, you know. know. Everybody is very smart in their own space. So I don't see anyone who I can really point and say they should go home. And because we are doing these things in a team, every aspect of the team matters. So that if you send someone home from my team, there's a dent that will remain. I have observed that there's a lot of tension. I have also observed that we are doing extra reading. We are even confirming the exact statistics, facts. No one really wants to go and, uh, you know, talk about 24 when we mean 22. So I, I can't tell at this point. I just know that we are all putting our best foot forward. I have, in the team, I have identified very many people with different strengths in the fields that they are, they are in, but I still strongly feel that for the last two weeks, I still stand out strong in my qualities and in my ability to navigate through the process of bringing up the strengths in every other person. I've seen women who are very qualified, especially women who are journalists. I've seen women who have uh, worked as CCs. They, are, they have more experience in policies, and that is what I'm learning. I, have, I don't have that much uh, experience in policies but I'm learning every day. One of the things I appreciate about being in this competition is the quality of the contestants who are in it and each and every person especially in my group has challenged me in different ways. You'd find one is strong on governance, another one is strong on, um, on, on, on clothing. So I have learned from each and every one of them. And, and I would not say none of them is not up to the task, but I believe as Linda, I have additional traits and, um, uh, that I can add more, uh, above them, but I, I have learned from each and every one of them. I have identified a few ladies who are a great competition to me, and one of them works in the same circles as me, which is civil society organizations, and uh, she's really articulate and bold. Uh, but I also strongly believe that all the ladies are very, very strong characters because we are all good at something and that is the reason why we are all here. I'm, I don't have the monopoly of knowledge or thought or good ideas and neither do they. So they have their strengths and I also have mine. I just believe I probably want it more than they do. Having uh, 50 women, they're the best at what they do. So you have to be at the top of your game and you can't really, really know who is the best at, you know, who's gonna win because we're all 
best leaders in what we do. So as I deal with them every day, I appreciate the networking part of it. I stepped into the academy in the last two weeks. My eyes saw lovely women, beautiful. But when we interacted even further, I realized they are very intelligent. They are passionate about what they give. And from where I sit, I see all of them as great competition towards becoming the president. And of course, I appreciate the competition and I am ready for the game. So for us this week, it is to leave or not to leave. That is a question. But the only people that actually answer this question are the judges who are here with us. And I shall now hand it over to our head judge. This, of course, is Dr. Zipora Zipiokoth to take it from here. Before I go ahead, I'd like to give an opportunity to my fellow colleagues, uh, Judge Michael. I want to make some comments. And I'd like you to take these comments pretty seriously. So first and foremost, when you are a president and you present yourself as a president or when your deputy is introducing you to the country and this is the first address from this particular uh, deputy or you as president we don't even know your name there's only one group that actually introduced the president and the deputy the rest of you did not so pay attention to little details like that but beyond that also remember um, Political battles are very fierce, and I didn't see anybody going across and picking even a single cabinet member from one of the other parties. It was a winner take it all. There was no inclusi inclusivity. What happens to the rest of the country? You know, those are some of the realities you have to think about. But, excellent thing that I did notice is that um, I heard about climate action, I heard about blue economy. I heard about innovation, but the other thing is that the rest of your cabinets are just damn boring. There is nothing innovative. And I keep wondering that is the median age in this room 55 and above? Because I'm not seeing the youthfulness within the things that you've done, and I'm not seeing any new thinking coming out or coming in in all the positions that you put in. Again, I had said it last week, you've just simply gone googled cut and pasted so maybe it's time for us to also cut and paste you out um i would like to uh, just add a few comments on to what um, judge michael said so i don't mind the fact that you'd like to have some entertainment value because we all know that this show must also be entertaining isn't it but be very careful before you mention public names on this show can you imagine sitting at home you're a sitting MP, and you have been named into some cabinet. So let's not take this thing frivolously. Even though, yes, we are looking for entertainment value in the show, let's not take things for granted. Uh, Mwangaza party, that was very good for presentation. However, you forgot to name your cabinet. And it's not an issue of time, it's not an issue of translation, because the translator, I think if there's any delay, it is less than 10 seconds. Then we had Mwamkompia, that was a good presentation. We are very glad that you thought of tomorrow, industrialization, climate engineering. Like, you know, people think of creating rain, you've seen that happening. Internet connectivity, because I mean, we live in a digital era. I am glad that we have a government that's thinking ahead for the generation now and future, not thinking behind, you know. Sawazisha so party, uh, it is good that you also named men in your cabinet very strongly. And uh, I don't know whether it is good or it is bad that you are the only group that uh, the train has said 22 members. You decided 22 is not enough, let's add one more. I'm just wondering, we are already strained as a country and you still want 23 cabinet ministers. And some of these roles are overlapping. And that is not just for you. Almost all the uh, groups. Why didn't you guys just stick to 14? And maybe even just surprise us with 10. Ufanisi na Ustawi. Ufanisi na Ustawi, yes, you had, uh, uh, you, you, you named uh, your groups very nicely in a very interesting way. Eight men, nine women, one person with a disability and one person, one youth. 
I'm just wondering, this one person with disability, are they men, women, them, they, or where do we put them? Like you need to tell us it's eight men and one woman with disability or nine men, women where one is a youth. But Gigi Party, I know you have never seen a female president in your whole life. But sincerely, this president of yours is standing right in front of you. You cannot start. Uh, he is going to our president. He is going to tell us she is going. We have to change our mindset. Okay. Yes, on believing in women leadership and believing that you are the beginning of the possibility of a female president. Then we have got Kilimo Mwangaza. Yeah, I'm glad you started with the state house choir. However, anyway, you are one of the groups that uh, stated uh, one thing about pending approval, which is how cabinet always happens. Yeah. So when the cabinet is read, uh, when the president is the cabinet, they are always pending approval. So that's a very good thing. Now, uh, because we know this is uh, a leadership academy and some people must leave and some people must stay. I'll just tell you the strongest group for the day. Let me start with the strongest. It's good to start with strong, yeah? With the good news. Uh, the strongest group is Mwamkom Pia Party. Yeah, we like that you thought of new things, you know, things for now, not just after. All of us know we want good health, good education, but when you think about the solutions for today, it's about industrialization, the climate engineering, and internet connectivity gives us solutions for better health, better education, and all that. So we like that you're thinking ahead and you're thinking for the moment. So for that, you are the strongest team for the day. Group one, apart from the issue of it's not about the cabinet secretaries, we felt there's a lot of indecisiveness in your group. And it is very clear even from the way you're delegating your duties. Even the time the, the president is coming to read here, trust me, the judges, we look at both verbal and nonverbal communication in those groups. We can tell you're not even so sure the, the time the president is coming, they're like, oh, oh, uh, take this uh, everyone is like are you sure she has everything we need that confidence the group feels like it is not supporting the leader enough for the leader to have that confidence the president needs support without the support of their team how will the whole world support them i believe with that we'll say we will allow you one more day but but kindly work work on making yourself better because you never know in the next episode whether a whole team might go or just members of any team may go home you are all at risk I'm here with the lovely Kumata Denge from Marsabit County and uh, Kumata is just taking part in a very interesting exercise and this is actually the formation of uh, government uh, including uh, the formation of a cabinet. How was that experience? Oh my good God, it wasn't that easy Chris but uh, luckily at least we're not eliminated, we're still in the show and we have to move on. But one thing that I, I learned today uh, from forming a government on the functions and the roles of the president uh, which came clearly uh, like a deputy president is not supposed to maybe chair a cabinet or mention any nominees uh, or um, unveil the cabinet. If the president is not there, nothing will happen. We're here with uh, a real, live, actual politician. You ju actually just took part in forming a cabinet and uh, now you're, you're actually seeing how government is happening on that level. Uh, what are your thoughts on uh, you actually making it to be this year's uh, Miss President? Um, on the task for today about forming government, um, it was very realistic. I'm actually surprised that it just takes a thought and, and a thought here and you put together a cabinet. And I was very excited um, having that real experience that um, you need to ensure that gender is balanced. You need to ensure the gender looks. So you have to think, whom do I get from here, from there? Um, about the national outlook, about considering youth. So it was real time. And, and when I become Miss President, not if, when I become uh, Miss President, I'm sure it will be much, much 
much more easier for me to form a very effective um, cabinet. I'm here with a lovely lady from Meru County. Her name is Purity Karimi. Uh, is there something that you've uh, learned at the academy that you want to apply in your everyday life as a leader? Oh yes, um, I have learned a lot and especially on matters uh, of public participation. So whatever it is that I do in all the, the activities, I ensure that uh, I am gender compliant. I have observed the to that gender role. I have involved everybody and especially the, the minority also, the persons with disabilities and also the young people. You know that 70% of our population is, is, is composed of the young people. So their voices must be brought to the table. So everybody I must be inclusive in everything that I do. And I'm here with Maureen Wanjiro from Kajaro County and uh, she has just taken part in a very interesting exercise. Actually, she's been taking part in forming a government complete with a cabinet. How was that experience? Uh, it was such a uh, good experience because I've learned a lot that I didn't know before. Uh, it's actually uh, a learning process um, and actually um, it's given me that uh, it's given me that opportunity to understand uh, governance in a better way. And uh, even now, at least, I can be able to sit down and come up with a cabinet secretary that I could not be able to do that before. I'm joined by the lovely Nuru Mohammed from which county? Kwale County. Nuru is just taking part in a very interesting exercise. She's been part and parcel of forming a government, complete with a cabinet. How was that uh, procedure? Well, the task was... Uh, technical but it wasn't that difficult. Uh, members had a lot of good inputs because we know our manifesto was based on trying to give a balance to the country. That's it for today. I challenge you. Now with this quote from Joanne Shuya, an author and educator. Leadership is not a person or a position. It is a complex moral relationship between people based on trust, obligation, commitment, emotion and a shared vision of the good. You won't want to miss the next episode of Miss President where another fascinating topic will be tackled followed by tasks to test the mettle of the contestants. Thoughts, opinions, compliments, suggestions, treat us on at media underscore focus. Find us on Facebook at MFA Media Focus on Africa and check us out on Instagram at Media Focus on Africa. And remember, on Miss President, you never really know until you know. <laughs>